I believe we are live. All right. We're going to give it a few minutes before we actually kick the show off. Give Chad a minute to catch up. Take a look at our power rankings. Jamar's still at number one, the world champion. Obviously, he should be. Our TV champion, Richard Sincere, has gone up to two. Faye Jackson, the women's champion, sitting at three. Tag champ, Maximus Khan at four. Maximum Mecca at five. Tag champ, Leonis Khan at six. King Shane at seven. Jackson Argos at eight. EFD Eddie Diamond at nine. And Ali Rex sitting at ten. Rounds out our top ten. Take a look at our calendar here for a second. After next week's episode of Adrenaline, our first pay-per-view on the card will be called Vindication. So we will have some implications on this show for that. We're going to do our thing. <sighs> All right, Twitch. I want you to listen to me very closely. I don't want this stream to skip. I don't want my video on demand to skip. We want to be able to watch this damn show from start to finish without it being a headache. Do you hear me, Twitch? Thank you. So without further ado, uh, you know what? Uh, let's run down the card. So we're going to kick off with a Fatal 4-Way match. The winner of this match will get a team match next week, the next show. Ultimo Maya, the dealer Vernon Black, the revolutionary Darius Lockhart, and Jackson Argos. And then with some tag title implications, Leonis Khan representing King's Ransom is going to face Dustin Carino, desirable Dustin of the New Heavenly Bodies. Kendrick Kaimari continues his warpath, taking on the Cajun Crawdad of Chikara fame. Ch Chikara, not Chikara. Nessa Reed is going to go up against Taylor Hendricks. Jamin Olavencia and King Shane Williams are going to go at it. Potential world championship implications here. King Shane bringing Rocco Bellagio into his corner. World champion Jamar Sims will be in the corner of Jamin Olavencia. Nick Dinsmore will team up with T. Ray Watford, take on uh, TV champ Richard Sincere and David Dupron. And in our main event, it's going to be a rematch from the women's championship final. Faye Jackson's going to defend against Maximum Mecca. So I'll tell you what. Let's get this thing started. I do hope everybody enjoys the show. And if this is your first time watching GK, uh, GKW, all the matches are computer, so I'm not editing them in any way. The finishes are what they are. Looks like we got a full house here in Cleveland. There it is, adrenaline. I believe I fixed the SmackDown uh, graphic issue. We are not going to assimilate. We're going to call these matches down the middle.
again, if, uh, if this is your first time uh, watching any part of the GKW series with the massive amount of technical issues we've had on Twitch, this is a combination between WWE 2K19 Universe Mode. If you're wondering why I'm playing uh, this on 2K19 and not 2K20, you must not be familiar with the series. 2K20 is hot garbage, and I'm not bothering with it. This is a combination of a universe mode in 2K19 and also a PC game, TEW 2020, uh, local to global. So the, what I'm essentially doing is I'm allowing the matches that will play themselves out on 2K. And uh, I'm going to plug those results into TEW at a later time. And that's how we're going to try to go from local to uh, global. That's also how injuries are going to be managed, so if somebody gets injured in TEW, uh, I'm going to respect their injury in the series there. If you've followed this series from the beginning and you have any favorites, that's great. The dealer Vernon Black there, uh, second from the right, that shirt is actually available on Pro Wrestling Tees, as is Jackson Argos on the far right in the red. Those are all shirts that are available on Pro Wrestling Tees in their shops. You look for Kings of Mayhem and Jackson Argos, and you should be able to find that merchandise. And if you do buy their merchandise, let me know in chat. I think that'd be pretty cool. The following contest is a fatal four-way match, and the winner will receive a television championship match on the next Adrenaline. Introducing first from Guadalajara, Mexico, Ultimo Maya. Ultimo Maya certainly looks ready to go. And his opponent from Jacksonville, Florida, representing the Kings of Mayhem, the dealer, Vernon Black. Vernon Black looking like he's ready to do some damage in this match. This will be the first time we've had a chance to see him in singles competition in GKW. We have seen his partner Alejandro Bravo, but now we're going to see what Vernon Black has to say for himself. And their opponent from Charlotte. North Carolina. He is the revolutionary and the honorary brother, Darius Lockhart. Darius Lockhart, if you're not familiar with him, get familiar with him. Look no further than the GCW for the culture event. He had a phenomenal performance, a great victory against Brian Keith. And he certainly brings that talent here to GKW. He's going to be looking to land that Asada driver. Television champion Richard Sincere has certainly been dealing with his issues with Nick Dinsmore, but now he's got all four of these men nipping at his heels. There isn't a single person on this roster that doesn't have championship aspirations. Nor is there a single person on this roster that's not capable of capturing championship gold. A little bit of mind games here from the Revolutionary. How is he going to strike a pose for the camera? Making sure it's all eyes on him, and there he is. Yeah. 
and their opponent from the Great White North, Jackson Argos. Fatal four-way, the winner of this match will get a television championship match next week against Richard Sincere. Jackson Argos wearing the white pants. When we saw him in the tournament, he preferred to wear his black pants. The only two-time rookie of the year. Jackson Argos had a very impressive performance in the World Championship Tournament. All four men ready. Oh, look at Argos. Just a smug bastard he is. Referee's going to kick us off, and here we are. Second episode of Adrenaline. Nice hurt Conrado there from Ultimo Maya. The dealer already making Jackson Argos fold. Oh, but Jackson Argos now gets that DDT. Darius Lockhart. Nice stomp. And Ultimo Maya answers back to him. Ultimo Maya and Darius Lockhart going at her. Oh, as Maya hot shots him across the rope. Lockhart going for... Oh, nice front suplex. Running Black not letting Jackson Argos get the upper hand anyway. Oh, and there you see the attitude in the air against Jackson Argos getting the best of him there. I don't think Vernon Black's who you don't want to deal with that list. Vernon Black, basically, we took a barroom brawler and gave him wrestling gear. He's not here to do anything pretty. He's here to kick. He's just here to kick somebody's ass. <clears throat> Excuse me. Argos was trying to get a quick cover, trying to steal one. Darius Lockhart is not amused. All four men back in the ring. Oh, nice big boot. Argos, his boot just landed flush under the chin of Ultimo Maya. Maya answering back now. Stiff kicked in the back of the head. Ooh, Darius Lockhart tried to steal one. This is going to be fast-paced. Oh, Sunset Flip powerbomb to the outside there. Darius Lockhart catching up to Maya sleeping. Oh, Jackson Argos hitting those multiple elbow drops. Right to the heart of Vernon Black. Oh, now he's just taking a look at himself. Oh, so happy with himself he is. the rope. He's going to shoot him off. Leapfrog's over. Avern and Black's not having any of it, though. A stiff shove down to the mat. Oh, running bicycle kick. There's Lockhart lands an elbow drop. Oh, breaks up the early pin attempt there by Jackson Arcos. Argos and Maya both pursuing Darius Lockhart. Argos returns to the ring. Oh, a head scissor there from Maya on the outside. Cover from Argos. Argos with his feet on the ropes. And Maya's going to break it up immediately. Oof. And Maya with a running boot and a heel kick. Nice combination there from Maya. That's that unorthodox lucha and Muay Thai style you're going to see from him. A revolutionary taking it to Vernon Black. Don't be, don't be confused by his size. He's a, he's a skilled striker in, in his own right. Oh, and just a pop-up slam there to Darius Lockhart. As he's going to roll out to the floor now. Double DDT from Vernon Black. And Jackson Argos. Nice running bicycle kick there. Argos has gone to the well with that one a few times. Oh, brainstorm. Is he going to hit that Argos axe kick? Oh, and Black looks like he had it scouted. Oh, and just tosses Argos across the ring. Argos is going to roll out to the floor now. Vernon Black took that heavy brainstorm, that jumping cravate driver from Jackson Argos. Ultimate Maya just ripping off an elbow strike to the temple of Darius Lockhart. 
And now Lockhart getting those shots in on Vernon Black. Vernon Black down to the floor. Jackson Argo is beginning to stir. Oh, flip pile driver. Ultima Maya hits that flip pile driver. He calls that the Mayan Destroyer. You've heard of the Canadian Destroyer. Well, that's the Mayan Destroyer. Oh, Jackson Argus went for that axe kick, but Ultimo Maya caught it. Oh, and a Sada driver from Darius Lockhart now. Darius with the cover, immediate breakup from Argos. I don't know why he thought he'd get the cover there. You know you got to get that ring clear. We're seeing everyone's signatures here. It's Vernon Black looking for, oh, that discus, big boot from Vernon Black. In the cover, one, two, three, and Vernon Black, the dealer, gets a television title match next week. Wow. Oh, and there we saw a running bicycle kick there from Jackson Argos. He went for that pinning combination, but he wasn't having any of it. That brainstorm from Jackson Argos, one of his signatures. And then we saw the Mayan Destroyer from the Ultimo Maya. And then look at that Yasada driver from Darius Lockhart. But the Let It Ride, that discus, big boot, Vernon Black. The dealer lets it all ride, and next week, he takes on Richard Sincere for the television championship. Congratulations to the dealer. Coming up next, Tag Team Championship implications. The new Heavenly Bodies, they want a shot at the King's Ransom, but they're going to have to prove it because uh, shortened that six-man tag last week. But now, desirable Dustin Carino looks to take on the younger brother, Leonis Khan of King's Ransom. His brother made it to the final of the World Championship Tournament. Dustin's brother, the Gigolo Justin, made it very deep into the television title battle royal. But what a showing by the dealer. worried that our game froze. I've had not too many problems with that with 2K19. 2K20 don't even get me started. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first a coming to the ring by Maximus Khan representing the King's Ransom they are the World Tag Team Champions, Leonis Khan. Leonis Khan, one half of the King's Ransom. This is definitely going to be a proving ground match for him. Wants to prove that he can keep pace with his brother Maximus.
King's Ransom, of course, our very first World Tag Team Champions. They have no intentions of giving up those championships easily. And his opponent from Bellevue, New Jersey, accompanied to the ring by the gigolo Justin Carino, representing the new heavenly bodies, Desirable Dustin Carino. Desirable Dustin, Gigolo Justin. Their arrogance really does know no bounds. Gigolo Justin is going to have to be aware our, of course, GKW officials have been known to toss people from ringside. It happened to Vernon Black last week when uh, Alejandro Bravo was facing Jamar Sims. He was ejected quickly. So if Justin doesn't pay attention to what he's doing, he's going to find himself on the outside looking in. The new heavenly bodies have their eyes on those world tag team championships. Dustin defeating Leonis Khan might be enough to make that happen. And the bell. Dustin's going to meet him in the ring. Leonis is going to bring him into the corner. Referee's going to have to go for a break. Are we going to get a clean break, though? And we do. Wow. Stop in the midsection there by Leonis Khan. Oh, nice standing STO. Went for that kick to the chest, but Dustin was able to block it. Dustin with a nice uh, dragon screw. Oh, Leonis is going to answer the call. So far, going move for move with each other. Oh, nice arm wrenched shoulder breaker. Desirable Dustin. Leonis Khan looking to prove themselves as single competitors as well as capable tag teams. I would argue that uh, King's Ransom has done that. Former OVW Southern Tag Team Champions and now the very first GKW World Tag Team Champions. King's Ransom is, is definitely main event caliber talent. Oh, nice elbow to the back of the head. Dustin making this fight ugly. Oh, picking up Leonis from the mat. Very disrespectful. I'm not sure King's Ransom is who you want to try to play that game with. Nice hatch suplex there from Leonis Khan. Leonis now has Dustin. He's going to bring him into the corner. Drives his head into the... Ooh, Dustin's going to fight his way out of it, though. Atomic drop. Leonis felt that one. He might have, have tweaked his hamstring on that one. Looks like the heel of his boot came down on the mat hard. Dustin's going to bring him back up to a vertical base. And he's got him up. He's going to hold him for a few seconds there. This might be a stalling suplex. Ooh. You can just hear the sound of his back hitting the mat. What's Leonis doing? Leonis has got a hold. Is he going to give him a backdrop on the apron? Oh! That looked ugly. Leonis gonna bring him back into the ring. Referee's count up to two. Oh, Dustin's gonna sweep the feet. Hot shots him against the rope. Desirable Dustin back in. Oh, he's gonna shoot Leonis off into the corner right in front of brother Maximus. Maximus trying to root his brother on. Oh, shots to the midsection. Desirable Dustin is not afraid to fight ugly when he needs to. Oh, and a decapitator on that bottom rope. Stomped in the midsection of Leonis Khan. And now Desirable Dustin has just been in full control here. Justin's on the other side loving it. Rolls over for the cover. Oh, and a strong kick out there from Leonis Khan, showing how much fight he has inside of him. Nice gut wrench suplex. Oh, now he's just attacking that knee. 
attacking the inside, that, that joint, those ligaments there, right in the side of the knee. That was about as ugly as it can get. And I wonder if Dustin's going to be looking for that desirable plex, that slingshot suplex. Leonis now has to get some offense in. I don't know why he just let Dustin into the ring. Nice back suplex. And oh, stretches out the leg there. Hits that leg breaker. That's a good way to hyperextend the knee. Leonis Khan returning the favor there to uh, Desirable Dustin there by attacking the knee. Dustin now has a hold of Leonis. Is going to bring him over to the ropes. This is going to be the Desirable Plex. Sets him up. Springs him back. Oh, and he hits it. Desirable Plex. Ah, Desirable Plex. Not Desirable Plex. See if I can get my words straight tonight. Deep arm drag there from Leonis Khan. Maximus Khan now showing a little bit of fire, a little bit of aggravation. Bookend! Shades of Booker T there for Leonis Khan. Hits that bookend. Quick cover there by Desirable Dustin. Oh, Justin's getting the referee's attention now. Is it time for that King's Ransom Swanton? Leonis is up on a vertical base and he hits that Swanton. Quick cover. One, two, Oh, wow. Kick out at two there. That was 2.9. Dustin now the quick fireman's carry. It's one thing I will give credit to the new Heavenly Bodies, both Dustin and Justin, is they know how to fight back in a pinch. They are certainly four-quarter players. Leonis Khan no lands that, that jumping back kick. Flush to the cheek of Dustin. Dustin's rattled. He might have gotten his bell rung on that one. What's Leonis Khan doing? Oh, giving Dustin a taste of his own medicine there. We normally don't see something like that from Leonis Khan. Oh, got, pops that elbow back. Hits Dustin right across the cheek. That's twice now he's landing shots. That's going to cause some damage to an orbital bone if you're not careful. Dustin ripping off some vicious chops. Is he going for another decapitator? Oh, right into the camera, too. Now, ring ropes, if you're not familiar, those are steel cable that are ratcheted to tighten, wrapped in nothing but garden hose and tape. So those, it's like getting hit with a baseball bat every time you touch them. Two. Oh, and a kick out of two there from Leonis Khan. What's Dustin going for? Desirable Dustin going up into the high rent district. Oh, and he's looking like he's going for that double axe handle. Leonis catches him with a backbreaker. Oh, nice springboard leg drop. And a jawbreaker there from Dustin Carino. Oh, uh, he's going to hit that desirable DDT. No, it's a butterfly suplex. One, two. I want to kick out a two there from Leonis. Leonis and desirable Dustin leaving it all on the line here. Oh, and another bookend from Leonis Khan. Leonis Khan now with the cover. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Again, a kick out at 2.9. Desirable Dustin showing incredible endurance. I got to say, if Leonis is able to hit another Swanton, if that's what he's looking for, it's got to be done. Oh, and he hits it and gets that quick transition pinfall cover. Two, three, and Leonis Khan has knocked off desirable Dustin Carino, and I don't know where that leaves the new heavenly bodies.
as far as challenging for the tag titles at Vindication. Swanton. Leonis Khan just driving himself right into the midsection of Desirable Dustin and just hitting that. That beautiful butterfly suplex. Leonis Khan showing that he definitely has what it takes as a single as well as a tag. But the World Tag Team Champions just remain hot. Heading into Vindication. And who's going to be their challengers? I think we might find that out next week. Oh, coming up next, Kindred Kaimari. You know, he's been pretty pissed off over the results of the World Championship Tournament. You know, he was really pegged as somebody who was supposed to pretty much walk his way to the world title. That didn't happen. He suffered a pretty quick elimination in the TV title battle royal as well. And ever since, and he's just been enraged. Last week he put a beating down on El Tigre Disco, and this week he looks to put a beat down on Cajun Crawdad, who both are known, you know, you don't want to call somebody a comedy act, but they're somebody, they're guys that are known as ones that are going to go out and high five the kids during intermission. Cajun Crawdad, you know, he, he's known for his time in Chikara, but, you know, I certainly hope he brought his work boots with him because Kendrick Kaimari is not here to have fun and high five. Kaimari's here to do some damn damage. And that's with or without Gangrel by his side. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, introducing first from the underbelly of Bavaria, Germany, he's the Vamp King, Kindred Kaimari. Kindred Kaimari. If you notice that t shirt he's wearing to the ring, look him up on Facebook. He doesn't have a pro wrestling t store, to my knowledge, but he does have those t shirts available for purchase. So do reach out to Kindred Kaimari. And this is a guy who's just here to whip somebody's ass. He's not here, you know, to put on a good show for all the fans in attendance. He's here. Arrive, smash, leave. And his opponent from the Cajun Seafood Shack, the Cajun Crawdad. Well, Cajun Crawdad coming down with a smile on his face, waving to the kids in the crowd. I don't think he's going to be smiling here in a second. I hope we got some seafood fans in the audience because I think Kindred's about to crack this dude's back like a lobster. It's exactly what's going to happen. This is going to get violent. This is going to get ugly. And, you know, just to give you a heads up, Kindred don't get paid by the hour. And there's the bell. Oh, yep. And Kindred already with a deep arm drag to the Cajun Crawdad. Crawdad trying to fight his way out with that sit out jawbreaker. I'll give him credit. It's Gangrel stands on the outside looking. 
as now Cajun Crawdad just doing everything he can to try to land these shots. He's trying to keep Kindred on the ground. Oh, there it is. Knee strike already from Kindred, and Kindred's looking to get the party started. Oof, just a nasty strike. Cajun Crawdad trying to bring the fight back. And the thing about Cajun Crawdad is he actually has some size. I believe the Cajun Crawdad stands at 6-1. So he's got a little size to him. Oh, back elbow to Kindred. Kindred was not happy with that one. Shoots Cajun Crawdad into the corner. Crawdad dodges. And there it is. Release belly to belly. And Kindred's about to have some fun. There's Full Nelson sit out bomb. in an arm bar. Drenching on the arm of Cajun Crawdad. Cajun's gonna roll through. Landing some flush shots there to the forehead of Kindred. Kick to the midsection there. Kindred down to a knee. Oh, backbreaker. Into a Russian leg sweep. So Cajun Crawdad's doing his best to fight back here. Gonna shoot Kindred off into the ropes. Oh, nice, and hits that back elbow. Kindred's rocked. Stomp on the back of the elbow. And right now, Cajun Crawdad has the upper hand on Kindred. Not even a count of one. Immediate kick out. Gangrel looking surprised, wondering why Kindred's taking so long. Why he's letting people hang around in these matches. He let El Tigre Disco hang around last week and now he's letting the Cajun Crawdad hang around this week. Kindred is supposed to be a killer. He's supposed to be a guy that just comes out, crown a Judah and win. Up oh, sweeps the leg. Kindred back on top now. With that kick across the chest, Cajun Crawdad reversed out of it. Shoots him off into the corner. Big clothesline to Kindred. Kindred's rocked. Oh, nice headbutt there from Kindred. Kindred with a stomp to the midsection now. Sends the Cajun Crawdad into the corner. Clothesline right to the back of the neck. Quick cover. And a kick out at one. Oh, nice jumping hurt Conrana there from the Cajun Crawdad. Oh, what's he going for? Oh, falling power bomb. Cajun Crawdad taking it to Kindred. How's that the Clossum bomb? Looked like he was going for that old bay boot, that Haluva kick. Kindred looks pissed. Oh, he's got Cajun Crawdad up. Oh, looked like he was going for Crown of Judah. But Cajun Crawdad got out of it. One, two, uh, no, kick out of one. Kicked him back there of Kindred. This has been a problem for Kindred. Oof. Shoulder breaker over the shoulder of her. Oh, went for that spear in the corner. Crawdad has been able to use his speed. Oh, Kindred now biting almost through the mask. Oh, again, another arm breaker over the shoulder there from Cajun Crawdad. This is going to be Clossum Bomb. And he hits it. Oh, Cajun, Cajun Crawdad is looking winded. He's looking winded. He's going to bring Kindred out to the middle. One. Two. I want to kick out a two there from Kindred. Kindred now getting shot off into the corner. Oh, looked lucky again. He was going for that old bay boot.
Kendra needs to focus. He's not focusing. Oh, strong uppercut there from the Cajun Crawdad. Gangrel just looks absolutely livid. Oh, and a stiff shot there from the Cajun Crawdad to Kaimari. Kendrick Kaimari is certainly underperforming tonight. Not trying to take anything away from the Cajun Crawdad, but he's good. I mean, these are two wrestlers that are on completely different levels. And right now, Cajun Crawdad has just completely outperformed him. Crawdad's got a hold of Kindred, drives Kindred into the post. Kindred now shoves him back. I shoot Kindred off into the rope. Oh, and a back elbow. Again, another stomp to the arm of Kindred. Oh, and Kindred. That one armed fireman's carry. Oh, backbreaker. He's going to transition it again to a Russian leg sweep. Right now, Cajun Crawdad is hanging around. Cover. Oh, and a kick out of two there from Kindred. Close line to the back of the neck of Kindred. It's going to be a third Clawson bomb, and he hits it. The Cajun Crawdad about to defeat Kendrick Kaimari. Two. Oh, and a kick out of two. Kindred's got to get it together. Gangrel finally, he's seen enough. Gets onto the apron. He recognizes Kindred's in trouble. Ever since the tournament, Kindred has completely lost his focus. He went from destroying guys within three minutes to now letting people hang around. And there's the crown of Judah. One. Two. I want to kick out of two. Oh, and Kendra now just yanks Crawdad by his leg across the mat. Kindred's angry. Is this going to be a second crown of Judah? No, Cajun Crawdad gets out of it. Is this about to be a fourth Clawson bomb? And the cover. Two. Three. And the Cajun Crawdad has defeated Kindred Kaimari. And just like Gangrel, I am lost for words. For an overall rating, Kendrick Kaimari sits at a 95. The Cajun Crawdad doesn't even hit 60. And he has defeated Kendrick Kaimari. Honestly, I don't know where that leaves Kendrick Kaimari on this roster. In an absolute shocking upset. Kindred is beaten by the Cajun Crawdad. What an absolutely disappointing showing here for Kindred. He's got to be broken after this. I just got to wonder what the fallout is going to be from this. Gangrel does not look happy. We all thought this was going to be a quick five-minute match. Kindred was going to come in and smash, but no, Kindred, in one of the most shocking upset losses, drops a match here to the Cajun Crawdad, and uh, that's just got to torpedo his ranking here in the World Championship race.
Coming up next, these two girls, you know, there's been no love lost between our rookie, Nessa Reed here, and Taylor Hendricks. Last week, Nessa Reed got a pretty stunning pinfall, speaking of upsets. Got that stunning pinfall on Taylor Hendricks when she teamed with Christina Von Eri against Taylor and Katarina. Taylor looking for her, I guess you can call it her pound of flesh in this match. But again, I can't, I can't help but be shocked that Kindred lost that match. That you know, there's gonna have to be a uh, a long sit down and back to the drawing board for Kindred and Gangrel after suffering that loss. Thank you, Vibes. Appreciate it. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the depths of Lake Erie, Nessa Reed. Nessa Reed, a recent graduate wrestling school immediately found herself the target of one Taylor Hendricks and Katarina Lee a little bit of initiation hazing but that's certainly not the kind of behavior we appreciate and her opponent from New Bedford Massachusetts coming to the ring by the Lindenburg witch Katarina Lee Taylor Hendricks Taylor is you can believe that Katarina is not too far behind Taylor is certainly accomplished on her own several championships as is Katarina it's that old saying you know sometimes two heads are better than one and that just makes the two of them that much more dangerous as it's now time for the GKW audience to hail Hendrix just look at the look of disgust on Taylor's face. Oh, and a hair pull slam there from Taylor. Dropping Nessa right on her back. Landing those stiff kicks. Oh, Nessa's gonna fire up. Running crossbody. Oh, now returning the favor. A little receipt there for Taylor. Stiff forearm. Nessa looking for that high roundhouse kick. Just barely missed it. Now she's got a hold of Taylor. It's going to bring Taylor up. Nope, nope. Here come some elbows to the midsection. Oh, clothesline into the corner from Taylor Hendricks. Nessa shoots her off. Another running crossbody. Taylor Hendricks is powerful. She's got those strong kicks. She's got strong striking ability as far as, you know, her elbows and forearms. Oh, and stretching at the knee there. Got that heel hook locked in. Nessa was able to kick away from it. But as you saw here in the early going, Nessa's going to have to use her speed. Taylor's now going to bring her... Oh, trying to bring her to the ropes this time. And Nessa getting those shots in the midsection off. Oh. Second time she's missed that roundhouse kick. Ooh. Taylor doing everything she can. This is getting ugly fast. 
We knew these two were going to turn into a Pier 6 brawl. Ness is going to bring Taylor back to a vertical base. Taylor's going to block the strike. Immediately get back in the ring. Referee's only count to two. She knew that Nessa was maybe going to try to steal a quick count out finish. Oh, nice snap suplex into the corner. Nessa Reed showing some good ring awareness. Nice neck snap there. Katarina Lee now with the distraction. Referee keeping a tight eye. Oh, Taylor's going to pick her up in an electric chair and just drops her back. Nessa hit hard. Nessa's going to shoot Nessa into the corner. Again, keeps looking for that corner back heel kick. She's missed it twice. Oh, and a monkey flip there from Nessa Reed. Oh, Nessa proud of herself. Nessa Reed, she's had every door slammed in her face. She's been told no. Told that she's not have, she doesn't have the right look to be in this business. She said, you know what? I don't give a damn. I'm going to train anyway. I'm going to put my boots on. I'm going to get my, my gear on. And I'm going to go in this ring and compete. And Taylor was stuck in the rope there. And for the fourth time, goes for that back heel kick and misses it. Oh, beautiful sit-out spine buster. Oh, this is long kiss goodnight from Taylor Hendricks. Long kiss goodnight. Out of nowhere, just snatch Nessa up. One, two. Oh, and a kick out of two. Deep backbreaker there from Taylor Hendricks. And for the fifth time, misses that heel kick. I don't know why she keeps trying to go for it. Nessa Reed clearly has that scouted. Oh, and it's a clips kick. Oh, lands it right between the eyes of Nessa. That might have rung her bell. And the cover. Taylor gets her feet up on the road, too. A little kick out of two. Nessa was able to power out of it. And a hair pull slam. Another receipt from Nessa to Taylor. Nessa and Taylor into the corner. Went for that back, that, that drop kick right to her back. Taylor uh, had it scouted. Oh, no. Taylor playing a little cat and mouse. Forcing Nessa to chase her into the ring. Oh, nice deep back suplex. Dropping Taylor right on her shoulder. Nessa's going to bring Taylor out to the middle of the ring. She's going to go for that eerie driver, that 1916. Ooh, went for a kick to the midsection. Taylor was able to dodge it. Nessa turning her attention to Taylor. She's got to keep her eyes on the prize here. Oh, and Taylor's got her up. Is this going to be the long kiss goodnight? Oh, and she hits it again. And I think Nessa's going to have a hard time kicking out of that one. One, two, and now oh, a kick out again. Frustration starting to build. The anger really now starting to build. Taylor going for another cover. One. And again, Nessa kicks out. We've never seen someone break the composure of Taylor Hendricks the way Nessa Reed has. And it's not like Nessa came here specifically to steal a spot from somebody. She came here to compete. Taylor Hendricks chose to single her. Oh, is this the lock Nessa? She's got it locked in. Lock Nessa. Is Taylor going to tap out? No. If she can hit that eerie driver. Oh, Katarina's arguing with the referee. Is she about to get ejected? Backbreaker there to Nessa. I might have bought some time. 
Hey, Blue, better late than never. Oh, and Katarina throws a chair into the ring. A kick out of two again. Oh, pop up her Conrana there from Nessa Reed. Oh, she's going to look for that eerie driver. That 1916 Taylor rolls to the outside. Smart veteran move. The veteran moving to the outside, knowing that Nessa couldn't grab her and hit that eerie driver, that 1916 brain buster. Katarina being smart, staying on the outside. Oh, inside cradle there, Taylor. I don't know why she's going for a cover there. Oh, I see. It was just enough to aggravate her. Taylor daring Nessa to get back in the ring. Oh, is that going to be the eerie driver? There it is. She hits it. Is Nessa going to be able to steal one? And again, Katarina interje interjects herself into this match. I got to think Nessa would have had the match won. And now driving that knee deep in between the shoulder blades of Taylor. Taylor can't get to the ropes. Oh, you can just see the pain on Taylor's face. Taylor now getting back up to a vertical base. Fires off that elbow into the midsection of Nessa. Oh, rakes the eyes. Eclipse kick. That's how you get your bell rung right there. One, two. Oh, and Nessa fighting from it. Fighting from it. Taylor Hendricks now going up in the high rent district. We barely see her up here. What's she calling for? Oh, oh and Nessa cut her with a power bomb. And a cover. Two. Oh, and a kick out of two there from Taylor. Nessa went for the kick, missed it. Taylor went for the elbow, missed it. Pop up her coming out of there from Nessa. Matching each other, stroke for stroke. Nessa trying to get her win back. This is where the veteran cardio, opposed to the young wind of Nessa Reed, is going to come into play here. Is Taylor going to be able to play the long game? Again goes for that, that, that reverse kick. Oh, that set out spine buster. And the back of Taylor's head hit that bottom rope. This is going to be Loch Nessa. Oh, and she's got it up. It's locked in. Taylor right in the middle of the ring. There's no way for Katarina to save her. Oh, but she doesn't tap out. I gotta say, if she's able to hit that eerie driver one more time, she should be able to put Taylor away. And it's up. Eerie driver. Can she get the cover though? One, two, three, no! And again, a kick out from Taylor Hendricks. Taylor Hendricks refusing to go down. Taylor now grabbing the young rookie, driving her head into the turnbuckle. Oh, a stiff chop. I can hear that all the way up here in the cheap seats. Shoots Nessa off into the corner. Finally hits that, that roundhouse kick. Oh, puts it up again right into the back. Taylor's had enough. Oh, is it a clips kick? Lands it. Taylor now starting to look gassed. The cover, two. Three, and Taylor Hendricks puts away young Nessa Reed. You got to give, I'd say, 80% of the credit there to Katarina Lee. She absolutely ran interference all over this match. How she wasn't ejected, I don't know. But Taylor Hendricks absolutely delivering in the clutch. Whew, just that nasty eclipse kick. That just landing flush. I don't know how you don't shatter a nose or an orbital bone. Nessa catching Taylor with that power bomb. We don't see Taylor go up into the high rent district, and maybe that's why Nessa had that lock Nessa. That Hoss of Pain move. 
And Taylor Hendricks quite proud of herself. Oh, here comes Christina Von Erie. Christina Von Erie now wanting to get some. She's had enough of Taylor Hendricks and Katarina. What the hell is going on here? Oh, kicked her face. Well, is Katarina going to help her? Katarina getting out of dodge. And now coming back in. Oh, dead raising. She gonna go for the 138 on Taylor. There it is. Oh no, Taylor gets her knees up. What's Christina Von Erie doing out here? She's seen enough of this. Running bulldog there from Taylor. Now Taylor getting the upper hand. Katarina heading down to the outside. Keeping the referee from breaking this up. And an eclipse kick for CVE. Vanessa Reed still out cold on the floor. Oh, nice stiff kick there to the midsection. We're going to have to get some security out here. We're going to have to cut away here. I don't know what to make of that. Jamin Olivencia, King Shane Williams, both of them want to be named number one contender. King Shane, he said, you know what, last week was a fluke, that loss in that six-man. But, you know, world champion Jamar Sims says, you know what, it's not fair that you always have Rocco Bellagio by your back. So he's going to accompany Jamin Olivencia out here for this match. It's also going to give our champion a little bit of here in the TEW thing and protect from injury. You got to give credit to the champion, Jamar Sims. He could have had the night off. But instead, he comes in, gets the back of somebody like Jamin Olivencia, who, like himself, has always counted down on, always told, hey, you're not big enough. You know, you don't have, you know, what it takes to be a world champion. Jamin Olivencia, former OVW heavyweight champion, now fighting another uphill battle against someone like King Shane. Not only is that hard enough, but then you got somebody like Rocco Bellagio in his corner. The hand of the king. But Jay Marsh should more than be able to, to counteract that. We'll see how this develops. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, introducing first from Buffalo, New York, accompanied to the ring by the GKW World Heavyweight Champion, Jamar Sims. He is the 11th Warrior, Jamin Olivencia. Jamin Olivencia is ready to fight. He's battled the likes of Marcus Anthony, Jay Bradley, James Moose Thomas, Crimson, Jax Dane, he's battled people two, three times his size when defending the OVW heavyweight title, so there's no way in hell he's backing down from King Shane. And his opponent from the Royal Grounds in Knoxville, Tennessee, accompanied to the ring by the hand of the King Rocco Bellagio, King Shane Williams. Big Rocco Bellagio in the shadow of King Shane.
King Shane certainly proud of himself. Still that loss to, Ma to Maximus Khan. That embarrassing count-out loss in the round of 16 still eating away at him. Jamin Olvensi is saying, let's ring the damn bell already. He's ready to fight. This isn't going to be a wrestling match, everybody. This is going to be a fight. Oh, Jamin Olvensi grabs that quick headlock. High angle wrist lock now transitioning down. Look, trying to bring King Shane down to a knee. Shane doing a good job keeping a vertical base. Jamar Sim staring daggers through Rocco Bellagio. Type into the corner. King Shane's going to bring him in. Let's see if we get a clean break here. And we do, surprisingly. And again, a collar and elbow tie up. James is going to take King Shane into the rope, saying, "I, right, you know what? I'm, I'm not little brother over here. <laughs> Jamar landing those quick punches. Went for that double chop. Oh, uh, King Shane looked like he was going for a scoop slam, but Jamie was able to get out the back door. Oh. Nice quick lariat from King Shane. Goes into the cover. Jamin kicks out immediately. Now he's got Jamin up on his shoulders. Jamin's going to reverse out of it. Reverse DDT. The back of King Shane's neck hit the mat hard. Oh, nice standing moonsault from Jamin. Jamin now laying that elbow deep into the back of King Shane Williams. Oh, sort of a rings of Saturn situation. Oh, and he turns Shane over so that his feet wasn't in the ropes. Smart ring awareness there from Jamin. And King Shane using his size just to get that arm loose. Letting those elbows rain down onto Jamin. Oh, ooh, hammerlock DDT. Already, the referee having to yell at King Shane. Oh. Jamin Olivenci with a receipt. Answering back with a short arm clothesline of his own. Stiff Lariat. Now driving his knee into the side of the leg of King Shane. We've seen Shane do that several times. I guess the referee doesn't have vision planned. Doesn't see that chair that Rocco Bellagio slid in the ring. Oh, nice drop kick. Oh, is he already going to look for that tornado in Zagiri, that 11th Warrior's way? Slides, lands it right on the ear. Bellagio already distracting the referee. Jamin. He's fine. He's got a standing O. He's got a bullet in the chamber. Is he going to hit it? Oh, King Shane caught him, though. Full on to the back of the head of King Shane. King Shane now returns the favor. No love lost between these two. It looked like he was going for a reverse suplex. Jamin was able to break out of that predicament there and land a suplex of his own. King Shane not happy about that. Oh, elbow right to the side of the head. Oh, and he's got that Cobra Clutch. That Cobra Clutch slam. Went for the cover. Quick kick out there from Jamin. Oh, and there he is. Shane just sinks in that deep side headlock. He's got that arm deep underneath that chin. Referee's going to watch to make sure that that forearm doesn't slip across the throat. Oh, Jamin with a kip up. Oh, nice. Step up head scissors. Oh, now he's just raining punches down on King Shane. Jamin's here to fight. King Shane sweeps the leg. And now Shane shot off into the corner. King Shane's going to turn him around. Jamin now fires back out at him. But then King Shane fights out of it with an elbow. Kick to the midsection there of King Shane. Oh, uh, it's going to be a code red. Jamin hits it. Nice code red there. He's got to be looking for standing O, though. Is he going to hit that diving foot stomp? Oh, and he lands it right into the chest of King Shane. Rolls through, gets the cover. 
Um, Bellagio again up on the apron. Is this going to be it? Are we going to see standing O from Jamin? Standing O! And King Chain's open. King Chain's got some color. Three, and Jamin Olivencia knocks off King Chain. What a victory there. Jamin does have to credit Jamar Sims trying to keep Rocco Bellagio honest. Is Jamin against Jamar the match we're going to see at Vindication? I don't know. Those are questions we're going to have to answer on the next Adrenaline. That Cobra Clutch slam there from King Shane. Nice strong kick out. And then he hits that double foot stomp right into the chest of King Shane. And of course it was that standing O that put him away. Shane Williams is going to be livid. As Jamin Olivencia, the 11th Warrior, gets the job done. Is a date at vindication in his future for the GKW World Heavyweight Championship? That's the question. Jamar Sims, a gracious champion, left back up the ramp, left the ring to Jamin so Jamin can enjoy his victory. Great sign of respect. I wouldn't mind seeing Jamin and Jamar get down on it. Coming up next, we got T. Ray Watford teaming up with the professor Nick Dinsmore, taking on the vintage villain Richard Sincere, and the self proclaimed locker room enforcer David Duperon. Hey, Blue, another guy you need to look up, David Duperon. Good dude. GKW fans, ignore that. He's a bad guy. Blue. Adam. Cool dude. But you GKW fans didn't hear that. We're going to use that good old WWE wand. The men in black. You didn't see that. Richard Sincere, he's got Vernon Black to think about next week. Vernon Black defeating Ultimo Maya, Jackson Argos, and Darius Lockhart in that fatal four way to open the show to earn himself a TV title match next week. Nick Dinsmore hoping to get back on track here. In this tag match, Duperon and T-Ray, this is a feud that's followed them throughout the Texas Independent Circuit through DZW and UPW. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Louisville, Kentucky, he is the pro wrestling professor, Nick Dinsmore. Nick Dinsmore, part of that Ohio Valley Wrestling training crew. Those classes that Randy Orton, John Cena, and Batista all came through. Now brings his knowledge his practices the GKW and we're damn proud to have him certainly proving he's got a lot left in the tank regardless of these personal attacks from Richard Sincere Dinsmore has more than paid his dues to this business and his partner from Lafayette, Louisiana, T. Ray Watford. It's time to rise and grind. Here comes Big T. Ray, and he looks hungry. T. 
Key Ray, an absolute physical specimen. He has the speed, he has the agility, he has the strength, he has the intelligence. He checks every box of what you look for in a potential world champion in the wrestling business. And again, just showing what a powerhouse he is. Absolutely jacked physique. Big T Ray gonna be teaming up with Dinsmore here. opponent from Brawler's Alley. He is the GKW television champion, the vintage villain, Richard Sincere. Richard Sincere locking eyes with Nick Dinsmore. We know there's more to be had between them two, but that match next week against Vernon Black has to be in the back of his head. He's got to make sure he gets out of this match healthy so that he can defend his championship next week. Sincere and Dupe are on. It might be a question of who puts the knife in the other one's back first. How are they going to be able to coexist? Nick Dinsmore. A true throwback. You think of Frank Gotch, George Hackenschmidt, Lou Fez, Bruno Sammartino. If you're looking for 450 splashes and Canadian destroyers, you come to the wrong guy. And his partner from Houston, Texas, by way of the Bronx. He is the locker room enforcer, David Duperon. David Duperon suffering that single loss to T. Ray Watford last week, looking to avenge that. He too is nipping at the heels of world champion J.M.R. Sims. Gonna undo a lot of that bad with a tag team victory today. David Duke, we're on the owner and promoter of DC uh, of the DZW promotion out of Katy, Texas. The referee's gonna start off, and Sincere and Dinsmore is gonna start this match. Oh, bell clap there from Dinsmore and a quick hip toss. Sincere out to the floor. Took offense to that, and these guys are throwing bombs early. Nice quick leg trip there from Dinsmore. Elbow drop, landing flush on the chest of Sincere. Dinsmore is going to send Sincere into the corner. Nice stiff clothesline. Sincere's going to catch the leg. Back wheel trip there. Now he's going to shoot Dinsmore off into the corner. Up, oh, and here comes Duperon. We knew it wouldn't be long. Oh, now they sit Dinsmore up into that tree of woe position. Looks like here in the early going, they're going to work well together. Double backdrop. Off the top rope. Dupron showing his, you know, his, his well-versed hands, his pugilistic striking style. Oh, lands those shots. Oh, quick super kick there to Dinsmore. And a straight jacket German on the floor. And gymnasium floor there beyond the mats there. I believe Nick Dinsmore hit the back of his head on that hardwood floor. There's nothing protecting him there. Starting to fight up the ramp here. 
Oh, and a backdrop to Dupron on that wood floor. These guys are going to need to get it back in the ring. Referees count up to five. Dinsmore aware, shoots Dupron back off into the ring. Oh, and here comes Big T-Ray. T-Ray looking to get him some more of what was last week. Quick face buster there from Dupron. Dupron's going to shoot T-Ray off into the corner. Oh, nice back elbow. Uh, is he going to hit that corkscrew elbow? And he lands it right across the back of his neck, right where your spine is, right in between your shoulder blades. It's going to make the back, of your, uh, you know, the back of your neck go numb. You're going to have a hard time reacting. Oh, he shoots Dupron into the corner. And went for that high angle drop kick, but he missed it. Sincere may have ran distraction there. Dupron went for a drop kick, and missed it as well. Stomped to the midsection. Oh! Nice tilt to world power slam from T Ray. T Ray's going to bring him up, does it again. Oof. T-Ray bringing the power. Oh, nice strong suplex there. Oh, now Dinsmore is going to come back in. I got to be honest, Dupron needs to get a tag. <laughs> oh, Dinsmore having a little bit of fun. You know, part of that fun loving, that's part of what got under the skin of Richard Sincere. Oh, wow. Had him in a vertical suplex, let him catch back to a vertical base and a neck breaker. Part of that fun loving style, you know, when Nick Dinsmore wrestled his Eugene for the WWE, is what got so deep under Richard Sincere's skin, saying, hey, if you had any respect for the business, you would have never wrestled as that character. Dinsmore saying, hey, you know what? I was trying to feed my family. You, what would have you done? Ooh, Richard Sincere missed that breakup. Oh, he's got a hold of T-Ray and catches him with a hatch suplex. Referee starting to count. T-Ray has to leave the room. As does Sincere. Telling both men, hey, you need to get back to your corner. Oh, T-Ray and Richard Sincere going at it. Dinsmore with the cover. Kick out there from Duperon. So, so far, all four men have worked well as a team. Dinsmore with T-Ray, Dupron with Sincere. Oh, is this going to be that LRE? That butterfly lung blower, and he hits it. Dupron lands the LRE. Is that going to be it? T-Ray in. Sincere trying to run interference, and the referee's down. Impact, eat your heart out. We got a ref bump. Dupron, certainly proud of his handiwork. Referee quickly recovering. Oh, shoulder block from Dupron. Oh, he fires up with a second one. Oh, Dinsmore's gonna miss. That sideway power bomb. Oh, and an angle slam there. Dinsmore uses that. Sincere's gonna shoot T-Ray over the top rope. That was a nasty hammer throw. Oh, and he's going for the Dinsmore stunner. David Duperon's arrogance might have gotten the best of him there. Sends Dinsmore into the corner, went for that back elbow, missed it. He's gonna send Duperon off into the corner. Be a good time to get T-Ray in. And he does. Here comes Big T. Ray Watford. Ooh, a nice sit-out leg breaker there in front by T. Ray. Uh, back breaker from Dupron. And Dupron looking to get and create some space between him and T. Ray. Here comes the vintage villain. Swinging gut buster from T-Ray. Oh, 
Richard Sincere had it scouted. Here has that ends the Saturn line thing. But T Ray is too powerful. He's going to power out of that. T Ray sitting sincere to the corner. Oh, a stiff clothesline. That's a bell ringer. Oh, sincere scouted that one out. Looked like he might have been going for that Nola Buster. Sincere now he's gonna bounce his head off that turnbuckle for a 10 count. 10. And it's not often that we've seen Sincere in a prone position like this. Oh, he shoots T Ray off there. T Ray, very smart, moves to the outside. Sincere looking like he's telegraphing these punches. T-Ray battling back. Oh, standing switch. Gut buster. Referee's count up to three now. Oh, and he's going to drop Sincere across those wooden stairs. T-Ray using his environment. Send Richard Sincere back into the, across the apron there. Nola Buster. That's a spine buster straight from New Orleans. And the cover. One, two. I want to kick out a two there for Sincere. Dupron. I got to notice Dupron kept his distance. Is T Ray looking for that Dominator? Oh, Richard Sincere catches him. Trips the, trips the heel and locks in that Achilles lock. Oh, T-Ray able to kick away from it. Again, is he looking for that Dominator? This time it looks like he's going to get it. He's got Sincere up. Dominator. Is T-Ray about to pin the TV champ? One, two. Oh, and a kick out of two there by Sincere. Dinsmore was ready. Dinsmore was playing some great cover two defense there. He had Duper on, locked down. Sincere getting T right off into the corner. Sincere needs to make it, make it, oh, no way. Come on, are you kidding me? Is Richard Sincere gonna do this? Oh, and a suplex to the outside to T-Ray. Oh my God. T-Ray just crashed to the floor. That might be the only damn thing that could stop T-Ray. Uh, is it that Saito suplex? Sincere landed it. He's going to be looking for that Kimura. Oh, he's looking at Dinsmore. Dinsmore got his attention. Oh, and the tag. T-Ray's going to bring Dinsmore back in. They're going to exchange knee strikes and hit a double suplex on the TV champ. Dupron reaching out for a tag. Yeah, Dupron didn't look like he was too excited about a tag the whole time T-Ray was in there. Dinsmore's going to hot shot. Sincere across the top rope. Dupron with a cheap shot. That rattled Dinsmore. Elbow dropped to the inside of the knee. Dinsmore starting to fire up. Hell, hell yeah. Dinsmore stunner. Oh, he's going to pull Sincere all the way into the corner. One, two. Oh, and a kick out of two there for Richard Sincere. What's Dinsmore looking for now? 
Oh, it's another. A second Dinsmore stunner. Is he going to get a pinfall? Three. And Dinsmore gets the pin on Richard Sincere. I'd have to say if Richard Sincere defends the TV title next week against Vernon Black, that Dinsmore would be in line for another match with Sincere. It's back-to-back -back Dinsmore stunners. We saw Duperon trying to do the same thing. Dinsmore saying if you want to see him and Sincere go at it again, give him a hell yeah. Dinsmore and T-Ray getting the job done. And of course, Duperon's nowhere to be found. We knew without Big Eric Locker by his side that Duperon was going to make himself scarce. And he did just that. Coming up next, a rematch of the finals of the Women's Championship Tournament. This is our main event, and it's going to be for the Women's World Title. Maximum Mecca challenges Faye Jackson. Maximum Mecca, who's not been afraid to show a little bit of those shades of gray through that tournament, defeated Brittany Blake. Seen the champ pin twice now. No, I don't think... Uh, the only time Richard Sincere has been pinned is in the world title tournament, and that's the first loss he's taken since he's been TV champion, and it was in a tag. The following contest is a singles contest, and it is for the GKW Women's World Championship, and it is your main event of the evening. Introducing first, the challenger from Waterbury, Connecticut, Maximum Mecca. defeated Brittany Blake and Ally Rex in the tournament before getting absolutely swept out by Faye Jackson in the final, now looking to avenge that loss. Can she knock off Faye Jackson in her first defense? Faye Jackson defeated Shaw Guerrero and Taylor Hendricks for defeating Mecca in the final. Maximum Mecca, you know, feeling the pressure tonight. And her opponent, she is the GKW Women's World Champion from Toledo, Ohio, Faye Jackson. Jackson not letting her size hold her back, she believes. And she certainly is a big, beautiful woman. Shades of Samoa Joe in her ring style. And she has been absolutely rolling since she's been women's champion. 
is taking a lot of pride in being the first women's champion. And there it is, the Women's World Championship belt. Maximum Mecca looking ready. And there's the champion. He's going to show off that beautiful championship belt one more time before the referee starts the match. Referee's now going to take possession of the championship belt. It's going to show it over to Mecca. Mecca, when she was signed, was considered pretty much just a prospect, maybe a future player in the women's division. But has since taken her destiny into her own hands, saying, no, I'm going to be a player now. Referee goes for the bell, and here's our main event. Oh, my God. Just a nasty clothesline from Faye. Maximum Mecca finally able to turn the tables around. Gets that shoulder block into the corner, but Faye not giving Mecca a chance to get, get her momentum started. Mecca trying to answer back, trying to fight back as best she can. Oh, and Faye's gonna hot shot her across the ropes. Already, what's she looking for? Is she looking for the Faye driver already? She picks her up. Faye driver! Is this gonna be over that fast? One, two, three. Are you kidding me? And in less than a minute, in our main event, Faye Jackson has absolutely obliterated Maximum Mecca. That is insanity. Wow. That was under a minute. And that really has to plummet Axma Mecca down the rankings. I don't know when she's going to get another opportunity. But Faye Jackson has just absolutely dominated. And not even broken a sweat. Hell, she didn't even need to take the damn belt off. What a beatdown. Well, I'm certainly surprised by how fast that went. Good God. Well, while we're here, let's go ahead and set up the next card. And this will be the go home show for Vindication. So, we've already decided. Our main event is not going to be Jamar against Jamin. It's going to be. Uh, let's go with a triple threat. Or no. You know what Jamin did? You know what? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do a tag. I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to name Jamin Olivancy a number one contender. We're going to do the world champion, Jamar Sims, next week. Well, next show. Jamin Olivencia. <coughs> and they're going to face King Chain's court. And we will add the stipulation that if King Shane 
if King Shane's court can win this tag match, we'll make it a triple threat at Vindication. But right now, the main event of Vindication is going to be J.M.R. Sims against Jamin Olivencia for the title. I was looking for my broom, but I found out that Faye Jackson had already taken it to sweep. Good lord. To freely edit this match, we are going to do Nick Densmore. David Dupron. Well, if anybody needs any home care in chat, I think Faye Jackson has a pretty good sweeping service. So we got Jamar and Jamin against King Shane's Court, Dinsmore against Duperon. I know I'm going to open with the TV title match. Uh, customize this match. We're going to do a triple threat. We're gonna do Kindred Kaimari. You know what? We're gonna give him a break because he just took a disgusting loss. So he he's gonna need to go on the back burner for a little while. We're gonna go Cal Jack. See who we who hasn't had a chance to get on the card yet. Kazuyaki Mahara. Bin Wong. That'll be a nice triple threat. Fourth match, we are going to do. We're going to do a tag team. This will be the number one contender to see who faces King's Ransom and Vindication. We'll have Detroit's Most Wanted against the new Heavenly Bodies. match will be we're gonna do Eddie Diamond and Dylan Bostic.
match. We're going to do a six woman tag. It's going to be. Fetty Jackson. Reed taking on Taylor Hendricks, Katarina Lee, uh, and Alley Rex. Excuse me. <coughs> Damn. Hit it, don't quit it. Opening match. For, uh, for next week will be the television title match. Dealer running black. on Richard Sincere it'll be for the TV title okay so that'll be the card for next week we're gonna open with the TV title match, Vernon Black challenging Richard Sincere. Six woman tag, women's champion Faye Jackson, CVE, and Nessa Reed against Taylor, Katarina, and Ali Rex. Eddie Diamond against Dylan Bostic. DMW against Dustin Carino for the tag team number one contendership. Cal Jack, the Osaka Butcher, and Ben Wong in a three way. Dinsmore against Dupron. And then Jamar and Jamin Olavancia against King Shane's Court. That's going to be the show next week. Alright, you guys have a good night.